see you wherever you might be. Thank you for joining us for this service of worship on Easter Sunday morning. Some of you have been with us from Tenebrae on Thursday night through Good Friday, and some of you up early this morning. Uh, but uh, whether you've been with us right through the journey or you're just coming in today, you're so welcome. And we want to just invite you to uh, enjoy this time of worship with us as a congregation. As we come to worship God, we are reminded that this is the day in which Christ rose. And the traditional greeting on Easter Sunday morning is to say, Christ is risen, and the response is, He is risen indeed. We'll do that a number of times through this service. So, let's practice. Christ is risen. Well done. Christ is risen. Good. Yeah, you're getting it. We'll practice a little bit more. Make sure your neighbors can hear it. Maybe open the windows or go outside and shout it uh, out in your front garden. One minute. People think you're nuts already. Welcome to worship this morning. As you join us for worship this morning, grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that God has made. And what a day. When God wipes away our tears so we can see the empty tomb. What a day. This Easter day. When God opens our hearts and Jesus calls us by name. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Let's worship God together.
this purpose that Christ came to destroy all the works of the evil one. And that's what, one of the things we celebrate today. Let's pray as we come into God's presence. Holy God, our salvation, you roll away the power of sin, bringing forth the one who makes everything alive. Out of the garden of violence and hate which evil has planted, you bring forth a spring harvest of love and forgiveness. Jesus Christ, creation's gardener, you went into the grave to drive out the power of the world. You shut the doors of pain and death and opened the gates of glory to those who trust in you to follow you as your faithful servants. Holy Spirit, anoint you of new life. You speak and open our eyes to faith. You touch our lips with glad songs of victory. You roll away our fears so we can tell everyone we have seen the risen Lord. God in community, holy in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, on this great Easter day, we praise you and worship you and honor you and declare Christ is risen. And Christ is indeed the Savior of the world.
we celebrate on this Easter day is that our sins have been forgiven. So let's come into God's presence and confess our sins and be reminded that we are forgiven. Logically, rationally, God, we have no need to confess. Our petty sins seem small in comparison to the great evils of our time. But this is the day in which you toss logic out of the window, raise Jesus from the dead. So we must throw out our claims of innocence and confess we have not lived as your Easter people. On this first day of the week, Lord God, emptier of tombs, we must admit we have not lived faithfully. We have not done great evil, but we have failed to do good. It's not so much that we have caused hurt, but we have not brought healing. It's not that we have trouble believing the event of Easter. We have difficulty speaking it and living it in our daily lives. And so, as you come to call us by name, help us to hear your words of mercy. You have not given us over to despair, but you have handed us hope. You have not ignored our emptiness, but filled us with the bread of heaven. You do not hand us over to death, but raise us to new life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. For it's in his name and for his sake that we bring our prayers before you. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me I see His wounds, His hands, His feet My Savior on that cursed tree His body bowed and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the ancient seal by heavy stone, Messiah still and all
Easter day. And friends, as we come into God's presence, I want to remind you that God's dawn of new hope, new mercy, new life is something we celebrate this day. On this first day, every day, we can walk as God's people. People who have been forgiven and made whole. For that we give thanks and praise to God that He has completely washed us clean of all our sins because of the man of sorrows. Man of sorrows
time to hear and receive God's word. Let's pray together. Father, we pray that you would help us to hear your word, receive it, may it deeply impact our lives, Lord. Not just that we would hear it, but that it, we would understand what we hear. Not just understand, but that it would penetrate deep into our hearts and lives, that we would live out what we hear. Help us to be attuned to your spirit today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come and speak to us, commune with us. Cause us not to be just hearers of the word, but doers of it too, as we come to worship Jesus, the King of Kings. Three readings uh, today, short readings, first from Mark 15, 21 to 24, and from this, and chapter 16, and then Romans 16 and Mark 15. They will be up for you. You're welcome to follow or simply listen. Mark tells us the story. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. They forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but they did not, but he did not take it. They crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. Then Mark tells us in Mark 16, verses 1 to 7, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away already. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said to them. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not yet. See the place where they lay. But go and tell his disciples and Peter. He has gone ahead of you to Galilee. Then you will see him just as he told you. Finally, Romans 16 and verse 13. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me. Good morning, my name is Rufus. You have heard about me in that reading from what you now call the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 13. My father was somebody you heard about too. His name was Simon. We come from Cyrene, a rather important town in the area that you call Libya. I'm an African, just like you. Some of you come from the southernmost part of Africa. I come from a country way in the north. We're Jews. And I will never forget that time my father brought us to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. I was just 13, my brother was 9. It was a long journey by boat and then quite a long walk to Jerusalem. My father was a very cautious man and didn't get involved in politics. I later found out that my grandfather, my father's father, had been taken in by a man called Lucaus, who had led many astray. There had been a massive uprising, the Romans had clamped down on them, the Emperor Hadrian had squashed the rebellion. My grandfather had been crucified by the Romans along with many others and we were forced to pay compensation to the Roman Empire. My father's family had been very wealthy but this had wiped them out and they were, we were now actually extremely poor. In fact, it cost my father almost all his savings to get us to Judea for this trip. It's one of the reasons my mother didn't come along. My father could not afford to bring her as well. Well, as we travelled, my father told us the stories of our ancestors of the Jewish people, the traditions of Passover, what to expect. There were things my father warned us about over and over again. To be respectful to the brutal Romans, to be morally, mortally afraid of the horrors of crucifixion, to be suspicious of anybody who called themselves the Messiah. So you can imagine our shock when, on the great day of Passover, we arrived in Jerusalem to find the brutal Romans forcing a man out to be crucified. Not only that, but they forced my father, when the man fell, they forced my father to carry the cross because he couldn't call it, he couldn't carry it anymore. My brother Alexander and I were so scared. We were convinced we were never going to see our father again. We shouted, but the Romans pushed us away. And they led my father Simon away with this man to the place where he was crucified. The strange thing was the change that came over my father. We thought we would see him run away from the place of crucifixion, but he didn't. He waited there. He listened to what Jesus said. He heard all the words that Jesus spoke. How he forgave those who crucified him. The sight of the crucifixion, my father sought out the one called John, the one to whom Jesus had entrusted his mother, and asked him many questions about Jesus. 
We went with John and the woman called Mary to a place where Jesus was to be buried. As we left the tomb, after the stone had been rolled into place, John and Jesus' and mother Mary and some others took us to the room where the followers of Jesus were hiding. I must say I wasn't overly impressed with those followers, cowering, frightened, hiding away, while the women were to brave the streets and get food and information. Well, since it was Passover, there was nothing we could do but stay with them in the house that night and the next day. The day after Passover, the woman got up early and went to treat the body of Jesus. They had been time to prepare the body before Jesus' burial, and I decided to follow. Everybody was sleeping as I slipped some clothes on and ran ahead of the woman to the place where Jesus had been buried. When I got there, I was amazed to find the stone rolled away. In the early light of that new day, I could just make out the entrance to the tomb. There seemed to be a person standing there. I went closer. He turned and faced me. I recognized his face immediately. It was that same Jesus, the one whose cross my father had carried. But he looked the same but different. The pain, the sorrow, the suffering had been replaced with such a look of joy. He smiled at me. Good morning, Rufus, he said to me. How do you know my name? I asked him. Oh, he said, I know many things about you. And his eyes smiled at me. I wanted to laugh and sing and cry and dance all at the same time as he smiled at me in that early morning light. Then he beckoned me to walk with him. We stood together facing the morning sun. How are you alive? I asked him, and she looking intently into his sunlit face. He laughed at this question, and what a laugh. It was a laugh that could make you forget that there had ever been anything like pain and suffering in the world. That, my dear young friend, he said, is a story for another day. For now, go and wait in the tomb. Tell the woman who are just about to get here that I have risen from the dead. Show them the place and tell them to go and tell others. And that I will meet them in Galilee, as I promised. Well, suddenly he was gone, leaving just a whiff of the most beautiful perfume in the air. I turned and went in and sat and waited for the woman. I gave him the message. We became followers of Jesus that day. My father sent word to my mother to sell everything and come to Jerusalem. She was with us when we travelled to Galilee some days later to see Jesus ascend into heaven. We were in Jerusalem ten days later when the Holy Spirit fell. We were sent by the Holy Spirit to Rome when my father and mother began a church in our home. When my father died certainly after that and my brother wandered from the path. But my mother and my faith remained strong. The Apostle Simon Peter came to Rome a little while after. He stayed in our home. And then he became the leader of the church in Rome. John Mark, the friend of Paul, who wrote the book from which you read this morning also came to Rome, and he was writing something which he called a gospel. I asked him what a gospel was, and he said it was a story about the life of Jesus for people who didn't know him. You can read some of my story there. Later, Paul the Apostle also came to Rome, also stayed in our home. My mother was like a mother to him. He said, and he called me the Lord's Chosen. Quite like that, but I think we're all the Lord's Chosen. Don't you? Friends, like those women, like the disciples later on, who came to the empty tomb on that Easter Sunday morning, Jesus meets us, greets us, calls us by name, and welcomes us. Then he commissions us as he commissioned them to go and take the good news to others. What will we do with it? How will we respond? It's pray. Father, we are so thankful for the gift of new life that comes to us in Christ. Thank you for giving us the gift of life, the gift of yourself. Now, Lord, we pray that we would be people who are responsible to take that message to others, to share with others what we have received. Not like the woman who left afraid, as Mark tells us. But may we not leave here afraid, but willing to go and tell what we have heard and what we have learned. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just because we're worshiping in different places doesn't mean we can't take an offering. If you're a part of our congregation, you can give one a snap scan, you can make a direct deposit, or you can uh, EFT. Uh, that's all fine. But we also want to give to God the offering of ourselves. 
uh, when we give an offering, we're not just giving our money to God, we're giving ourselves to God. So as we sing this next song, let's give ourselves and commit ourselves into God. Then, as we do every Easter Sunday, let's come to the Lord's table to sit and to eat and drink together with Jesus. Join us at the table. service. Uh, for those of you at the early service and the 9.15, the same service, we come to worship God around the table as the family of God. And as we have been doing all along, we begin the service not by washing our feet, by washing our hands and reminding ourselves that Jesus comes to cleanse us and wash us completely of all our sin. So as we come to this communion service, the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. The Lord is risen. We have seen the Lord. Lift up your hearts, people of God. We lift them up to the risen Lord. Let's pray. How good it is on this day of joy to lift our glad songs of praise to you, Redeemer of the lost. You planted your steadfast love in the gardens of creation, but we ate the bitter fruit of idolatry and sin. Prophets came in your name, bringing the, your gracious word, but we could not hear them call your name. When we were about to perish, when we should have died, you sent the one who could bear that threat away. Therefore, on this day and every day, with those in heaven and those on earth, we lift our glad cries to you as we say together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, all creation is blessed with new life on this day. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes, bringing your resurrection power. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of Easter, and blessed is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, sent by you to bring us salvation. Your right hand, he releases us from the grip of sin. Walking through the darkness of death, he leads us into kingdom's light. 
confounding the practitioners of evil, he did good for others, humbling himself to experience our pain and suffering. He is raised to rule over all. As we believe what we may not understand, we trust that mystery we call faith. As we declare together, Christ, Christ has died, but death, death does, does not, not have, have the final word. word. Christ, Christ is risen, risen and Easter brings for us when Christ calls us by name. Christ will come again and lead us into God's glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread and cup, resurrecting God, and upon us who seek to be your children. When we are done eating and drinking with the risen Lord, send us forth to feed the hungry, served at the table by the one who freed us from death. We would go out to be servants of the poor and oppressed in our world. Called to proclaim the good news of Easter, we would not do so just with our hands and hearts, but with our lips and our whole lives. Through Christ, glory and honour, praise and thanksgiving are given to you, Holy God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy people on this first day of the week and in all the days to come. And so we say, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. So it was that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, Take and eat, this is my body that was broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said to them, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. We follow our Lord's example in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we have been doing right through this Easter weekend, Please, uh, we'll serve everyone around the table with bread and cup. Once everybody has got, we will eat and drink together. Sally, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Emma, body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Christ's blood shed for me. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for us. Eat of it with thanksgiving. Take and drink. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for us and for many others for the forgiveness of our sins. Drink of it with thanksgiving. And now we bring our prayers of thanks and our prayers for others. And I invite you, wherever you might be watching, if there's a prayer that you'd like to offer, we'll uh, give a time of silence where you can lift your own prayers before God, and then we will bring those prayers to a close. So please feel free to pray, silence, or out loud, wherever you might be, as we bring ourselves into God's presence, and we give Him our thanks, but also our prayers for others. Lord, we thank you for those who are at the forefront of the fight against this disease. Thank you for those who are putting their lives on the line for us every day. Those who risk infection and death to keep us healthy and safe. Thank you for our government and we thank you for those who have very difficult decisions to make. Pray that you would continue to guide them and lead them by your spirit. We pray for your church. Lord, this is very difficult for us not to be able to be together on this Easter Sunday. Thank you that we can continue to remember the fact that you were raised from the dead, even though we can't celebrate it together. We pray for your church scattered in all different places today, and especially we pray for those for whom this is their experience every Sunday, those who cannot meet openly because of persecution. We pray today especially for the persecuted church. Today, Lord, we come to thank you for your goodness and grace revealed to us in the resurrected living Christ. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you would help us to remember that we are your servants and that we are commissioned by you to represent you in the world. May we be living representatives of the living Christ. What is left is simply to say thank you for joining us for the service. May God bless you on this Easter day and receive the blessing. May God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit go with you, remain with you, bless you, pour out the goodness of his grace upon you. 
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you, remain with you this day and evermore. Amen and Amen. God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning. Your throne, Your Majesty, I can but bow. I lay my own before You now in royal robes that I don't deserve. Yeah.